What is going on, Vikings and Draconians? Draco Invictus here with another Valheim video, and today we are taking a look at the definitive guide to storage and organization. Let's get to it. So, you've decided that you want to get organized. Is your settlement a mess? Is your Viking long haul just cluttered with chests of all various sizes and you don't know where anything is? Well, you've come to the right place. So, we are going to take a look at the different storage options that we have and what I feel is the best way to get them all organized. So. We start with the personal chest that you can't build until you get into the Iron Age. The regular chest, which you can build with just 10 wood and a workbench. And then you have the reinforced chest. It has 18 slots. It takes a couple iron to build and some fine wood. And then, of course, we also have the cart. The cart is great for storing things that are outside. For example, if I come over here... Out here with my little garden, which I totally need to redo. I have my cart sitting out here. And in it, I keep my cultivator, all my seeds. I keep my fishing pole and my bait. Anything that I might use out in this area. And that is my very first suggestion for getting organized. Do not store your ingots where you're cooking food and you don't need ingots. This is my forge area, right? This building is my forge area. In it are all the things that I need to build with a forge, a workbench, artisan bench, all that good stuff. This in here, part of this in, in the back, is my kitchen area with my fermenters and my cooking pots and all those things. So all of my food stuff is stored in here. All of my armor, weapon, clothing, building stuff is in here. So. Don't be afraid to have different storage areas, but keep your stuff close to where you're working. There's enough of a grind in this game having to go get iron and more iron and more iron and more iron or silver is even worse because it's up in the mountain and it's hard to get a boat up a mountain. But keep your things where you're going to use them. That is the best advice that I can give you. It's okay to have different storage chests in different locations for different things. So now that we've talked about the different sizes of chests, and at first I thought that the reinforced chest was kind of meh. Now, as soon as I have enough iron to realistically do it after I build armor and all those things, I change my entire warehouse into reinforced chests. So let's talk about optimizing storage. You can stack these three high. You can stack these three high. You can stack these four, but you might be reaching it. It'd be very up right at the very top of the ceiling. So let's talk about how we stack them, shall we? Now, there's a couple different ways that people do it. Some people turn their chests long ways. Okay. And they, they get them really close. And I'm actually going to go into a build camera right now, just so that I'm out of the way and you guys can see what I'm actually doing. Because you can take this thing and put it right there. And that's as close as they will get without it looking stupid because it's kind of like glitching through. Okay. So you can do it this way. But now you're taking up a, a whole floor tile. Okay. Or you could go this way and then put them right next to each other like so. And I use the front faces where the legs are to line up um, distance so that they're the same distance. I know that those are sticking into the wall, but uh, my point is, is that you can squeeze these together side to side and get them as close as humanly possible with a mouse. And you could do it that way. I like doing it this way because it simply gives me more room. This is totally viable. So whatever I suggest to do with these, you could do with these. Let me get out of this camera. It's kind of 
goofy. But it allows me to kind of get myself out of the way. Let's pick up all of our wood. Okay. So we're placing our first chest. Stare at the floor. Make sure your, your pointer's at the floor, not at the wall. See? It floats up the wall. It moves along the floor. So I like getting an angle on this, and this shadow kind of sucks. But I obviously don't want my chest going through the back wall, but I want to get as close over here as possible, just so I can get as much in as possible. And actually, we don't want to push it all the way against the back wall here anyway. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit. Now on the left wall, I'm making sure that I lose that left handle. If you guys look right above my head when the handle disappears on the left hand side. All right, that's as far as I want to go. Now I'm going to pull it toward me just a hair. There we go. Now we may end up moving that again, but I want to move on to the next part. And that is using the one by one wood floors. Now, if you've turned your chest running this way instead of this way, you may end up wanting to go with the two by two floors and then having the chest sitting right at the edge of the floor that way. I'm going to go with the one by one. And I'm actually going to use this wall here between these two walls. You can see how it turns green. I'm going to back up. I may end up hold on let's go back into this camera again just so i can get myself out of the way and lower down a little bit so i want a little bit of height off of this chest and you guys will see why in just a second about there that's about where i want to be and how do i know that that and actually that's we may not have to move this because it's right where i want it to be grab yourself a wood beam one meter the horizontal one and snap it if you can see my height is really good i'm gonna yeah see if the beam itself is above the chest which is what we want okay we don't want half of this being hidden we don't want half of the chest face being hidden by the beam but we do want to go with these beams let's get back out of camera mode here and we're going to snap our other floor in and it should go right in place now we're going to take and put our second chest down and we're going to kind of pull it towards the front and we're going to kind of push it off to the side, right? Because we're trying to get as much room as possible. And there we go. That's good enough for me. You may want to move the top one back just a hair. If it bothers you, it doesn't bother me. I'm not that OCD. Now we just want to grab the horizontal wood beam two meter. And we're going to look at, once more into camera mode, we want to look at the front face here of this piece of flooring. And we wait for the load. There it is. This is what our target is when we're putting this beam on. Okay, because if you look up here, it's going to be red. So we want to aim right at the face of that piece of wood. And you can do this without the camera. So it's, they, the camera mode's not needed. I'm using it for this purpose, okay? But now you can see that we still have plenty of room to access our chest here and our chest here, and we're gonna do another one up here. So one more, because we're gonna stack these three high. Again, that's the snap between the two walls, but we wanna go slightly higher, and, and I wanna see that wall section again. And we wanna go the same height. Think half a beam width, and you should be pretty good to go. In this particular case, it lines up just underneath. That's uh, lines up just underneath this beam that runs along this piece of wall, so that works out well. All right, let's put our other one in. Now we want to get ourselves some height, and that's how you would do it if you didn't have a camera. And so I'm going to do it with you. And we want to grab our last chest. And again, we want to push it all the way to the left at the edge of the floor, right? And all the way back. See, my head keeps getting in the way. That looks about right. All right so we're going to push it back just a hair off the edge. There we go. And we're going to grab another beam and we're going to put it in place. Now you could do this 
all the way across this wall and you would have a crap ton of storage. Three levels high. Now, let's talk about organization because this also works the exact same way for the bigger chest, okay? So let's, uh, let's say my wall is here, right? So I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna push the chest back. And again, we're only gonna use the half floor, okay? Yeah, the only thing that really changes is our height. Grab our one by one. And again, I'm gonna use this section of wall. Think half a beam height difference from the chest. Yep. And now we'll grab a second chest. We'll put that down. And we're gonna do the same thing. Now, um, I'm also looking at the latch and I'm trying to line them up vertically between the one at the bottom and the one above it. Just like that. If we grab our beam, looks fantastic, looks great, okay? It's exactly what we want. And you could do a third one up here. And for this, I'm gonna use the camera just because it's easier. But you don't need the camera for any of this, so don't think that you need it. I'm just using it for instructional purposes. Okay. Turn the camera off. Grab our beam. Get out of build mode. You And of course, then your, your ceiling would come over the top. It'd be very, very easy. And you would be able to fit at least one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six wide, three tall, 18 chests, at least of the bigger chests across this wall with each chest having 18 slots. That is a lot of storage. Now, let's quickly talk about organization. How do you do that properly? Let's go into build mode. We're gonna go to furniture, go to signs, okay? I want to put this sign, uh, the top sign I like either going where the top of the sign is even with the, the top of the shelf or splitting the difference. I personally like going with the top, the beam and the top of the sign. And then I use the center dot that's on the sign to line it up with the latches. For the bottom one, I actually like the bottom of the sign lining up with the bottom of the beam. And these beams give us a lot of room to play with. If you wanted your signs off to the side instead of centered, you could do that. It just gives us a lot more face for us to put the, uh, the sign against. Uh, so it gives us a lot more options. But two signs are all that we need because here comes the magic. Okay, I'm gonna get out of build mode. So this bottom chest, uh, we're gonna make it our hides chest. We're gonna put our troll hides in there. The second chest is gonna be our trophies. The third chest, what do we have in our inventory? Uh, is going to be our wood chest. I typically store my wood. I wouldn't store it in here, but that's, we'll talk about uh, bonus tips afterwards. So this is gonna be our wood chest, the top one, okay? We can choose to split our signs two different ways. This sign here can go top and middle, and then this sign would just be for the bottom, or this sign would be bottom and middle, and this sign would just be for the top. Let's go ahead and go with this. And let's say we wanted to, the middle one was going to be what we're, uh, trophies, okay? We're just gonna call it heads. And uh, we want the bottom row to be hides. Well, okay, that doesn't look very good, right? It just says heads, hides. We don't know what the hell's going on there, okay? So the trick is, Put a few spaces, like seven or eight. Now, heads is on the top row, hides is on the bottom row. Very easy to disseminate that, yeah? But we can take it one better. And now I'm going to, through the magic of me scrolling over to my other screen, I'm going to drag my character map, come on character map, into the into the game of uh, <laughs> Valheim here. Uh, char character map is built into Windows, okay? And you can see my font is Arial. This is nothing special. 
and I scroll down toward the bottom. Here we have the up arrow. Here we have the down arrow. Here we have the up triangle. Here we have the down triangle. You can use any of these. So if you select one, right? If we pick one, let's get rid of that. We pick the up triangle and we say select. We pick the down triangle. We say select. And then we highlight all of those. Just click and drag and then hit copy. It now puts it on your clipboard. So now we can come in here and we're just going to paste that. And here we're going to say heads, put our spaces. And here we're going to say hides. Now we have up and down arrows that show us heads are up here, hides are down here. Very, very simple. You could also use the up arrows and down arrows, the thinner ones. They don't look as good, but let me show you what they do look like. Let me do this, select, select, highlight, copy, come back into the game. And we'll just do it on this one here, just because it's easier. This is a treasure. Put our spaces and then heads down here. As you can see, there are the arrows, but they're a little bit too fine for me. I want something a little bit more robust. So now we know uh, different ways that we can get special characters by using the character map that's built into Windows. Very easy to use and you can paste it right into your signs. Uh, there is another cool thing uh, that you can do with signs. For example, um, let's see here. I'm going to build a portal, okay? And that is a portal to anywhere. That's what, that matter of fact, that's what we're gonna name it, anywhere, right? So we're gonna grab the sign and we're not sticking the sign on the portal. We're going to stick it behind the portal. And this one, we're gonna ease up right there. And we're kind of tucking it back behind the portal, right? So get out of build mode. And we're going to say anywhere, right? Now we're just gonna put a bunch of spaces behind it. Nothing after it, just a bunch of spaces. See what happened to anywhere? It actually moved off the sign. So let's put some more spaces. There we go. It's almost centered now. And it will, like there, it stopped. It won't allow us to put anywhere, anymore, okay? So if we go with a shorter word here, like let's say motor, Okay, now it's actually off to the left. Remove a couple spaces at the end. Now we have the floating word motor right in the path of our portal. Pretty cool for the, the signs there, huh? All right, that's one bonus tip for you. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to jump to one of my other worlds and show you what my organization looks like for chess just so that you guys have an idea, a starting point where you can go with yours. All right, guys, so here we are in the world that I live stream, and this is my Forge building. And so if we look in here, okay, I've got my uh, two smelters here, I've got my two kilns here, I've got my coal, that's actually not seeds anymore, and then I have rocks, and then over here I have ore, more ore, even more ore. How much ore do we need? And then not ore. Now my not ore box is actually my wood box. So that is uh, why it's not ore. And so I have my wood close to my kilns so that I can make coal more efficiently. Obviously I have all my ore stuff over here because my smelters are right here. As I make coal, I put them in the coal box so that I can feed the smelters. Again, keep your equipment close to where you're going to be using it. I got my forge here. I got my workbench there. And if I look into my warehouse, I have pretty much everything else other than my seeds and outdoor kind of stuff. And here's how I organize things. Well, all my ores are in there. I put all my ingots in here just so that my forge area isn't too cramped. Okay, and then I sort by biome. Okay, so if I look in my swamps box, 
I have things that I pick up in the swamp. And that way, it's very easy for me to remember. If I need chain, I know exactly what chest I need to go to. I don't go, oh God, did I put this in the metal chest or this chest or that chest? It's always in the swamp spot. And obviously the mountain and the plains would be the same. I, in this playthrough, I haven't gotten that far. So both those boxes are empty. Arrow materials, okay? I keep flint. Um, I'll have obsidian in here. I keep feathers in here. The only thing I don't keep in here is resin because I use resin for so many things, it actually gets its own box. And then of course, as I make various arrows or pick arrows up, I store them in the arrows box. Poor wood goes in there. Now up here is one that's a little bit different. I haven't seen other people do it. It's the portal fixins box. This houses just fine wood, dwarf eyes, certainling cores. That's it. That's all that goes in this box. So I know if I need to go make a portal for something, I go to one box and everything is there. And then of course I have my trophies. I always put that over the door for some weird reason. And then the last thing I want to show you is out here. Um, normally I would use a cart, but I built this little tiny closet here. And it only has one chest in it and it has all my seeds. And then I have normally my cultivator would be hanging here. I have it in my inventory right now, but normally I would just hang it right there. And then I hung up some other tools just so that it wasn't all, the cultivator wasn't lonely by itself. But I keep the tool and the and what I'm using it for very close to my actual garden. So that way it's easy to remember. And as long as I remember to hang the cultivator back up, it'll always be there for me. Uh, the only other box that I have over here is this box. This is my fishing box. And it's just got my fishing pole uh, with my bait in it. So that is how I organize things in every playthrough that I do for Valheim. It just makes things so much more simple. I hope that all of this information helped you. This was a ton of information and a rather long video. And if you stuck around this far, God bless you. And I want to thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. Um, I'm loving Valheim. I am live streaming this game like three, four times a week. Uh, you can find my stream schedule on my Discord, the link for my Discord down in the description below. If you want to help support this channel and you're new around here, think about leaving a big thumbs up and a subscribe. It just lets me know and YouTube know that, hey, the content that Draco's putting out is something that more people should see. I am on a severe push this year to hit 10,000 subs, and I'm almost halfway to that goal this year. So... I need your help with that, and uh, yeah. And if you'd like to help in a more personal way, there are ways to do that down in the description as well. Once again, thank you for your time. Take care of yourself out there. This is Draco Invictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya.